I got asked to solve this quadratic equation by completing the square. So step one, complete the square, then we'll deal with the actual solving part, right? My method for completing the square involves step one, whatever's in front of x squared, factor that out of the first two terms. So I'm going to write four with an open bracket. I'm going to divide this by four. Well, that's easy, actually. That just leaves me with x squared. And I'm going to divide that by four as well. Two divided by four is a half. So I'm going to write a half x. So I factored four out of the first two terms. Four divided by four is one. Two divided by four is a half. I'm actually going to give myself some extra room there and write the minus three equals zero. Now comes the completing the square part. We're going to need some magic number that will turn this into a perfect square trinomial, plus or minus some other amount. That magic number is going to be half of this, half of a half as a quarter, squared. <laughs> half this number, squared. Half of that is a quarter, and squared is 1 16th. So I am going to write plus 1 16th. And to compensate, I am also going to write minus 1 16th. I know that these cancel each other out, but what I'm trying to do here is turn this, the first three terms, into a perfect square trinomial. That's what it, we're doing with completing the square. Now this section is a perfect square. So to be clear, I have four times x squared plus a half x plus one sixteenth here. And then in addition, I have another four, but I'm multiplying that by this negative one sixteenth. So this whole chunk gets times by four. That chunk also gets times by four. And I have my minus three equals zero. Now, the key bit is that this here is a perfect square trinomial. And separately, this is just a bunch of like math you can do on your calculator. So this, this bit here is four times. Now, I don't know if you know how to factor a perfect square trinomial or not. You should. It's the square root of this term and the square root of x squared is x. The square root of the last term, the square root of this is one quarter. P.S. That number is always going to be half of the original thing here. Half of a half was a quarter. Remember we said that? And then the sign in between them matches this sign here. That's a plus sign. And then wrap that in brackets and square it. So this here turns into that. And then this is just some math you can do on your calculator. Uh, maybe you don't need the calculator. Maybe your teacher doesn't let you use it. I don't know. Four times a sixteenth is a quarter. So what we actually have here is negative a quarter minus an extra three. I'm going to rewrite that three as 12 quarters because a whole number three is, well, three times four gives me 12. 12 divided by four gives me three. So why don't I just replace three with 12 fourths? Negative 1 minus an extra 12, that's going to leave me with minus 13 quarters equals 0. All right, so that is now I completed the square, right? Now I can actually go about solving it. Now the way that I solve these kinds of problems is to undo things from the left-hand side, so I eat my way into where the x is. Some teachers call that opposite operations. Some teachers call it SAMDEB, or like whatever the reverse of BEDMAS is for you. Whatever, the point is, if I want to get at my x, I have to undo this subtracting 13 quarters. When I undo that on the other side, I end up with positive 13 quarters. I have to undo multiplying by 4. So I have to divide both sides by 4 as well. That's enough for all doing it once. 13 quarters divided by an extra 4 is uh, 13 sixteenths. Oh, this num these numbers are going to be absolutely brutal. In order to undo my squared, I need to do the square root of the other side. 
So x plus a quarter is going to be the square root of 13 sixteenths over here. And the thing you'll have to remember as a math student is that when you take the square root of something, you get both the positive and negative options for that because you can square the positive number to get that or you can square the negative to get it because when you square a negative it turns back positive so both those are valid at this point you have two different options x plus a quarter could be positive root 13 sixteenths or x plus a quarter and again i'm just copying the left side could be negative square root of 13 sixteenths. Oh man, this is turning out to be pretty ugly. I can take the square root of 16, but not 13. So what I'm gonna do here is x plus a quarter equals the square root of 13, and I'm actually gonna take the square root of 16, so it's no longer underneath a square root sign. I'm gonna do the same over here. This is x plus a quarter equals negative root 13 and divide that by the square root of 16, which is four. And now I have, to sub I have to undo this adding a quarter on both of these equations. If I do that, it becomes subtraction. I'm gonna do that on both sides here, take some liberties with my notation. One of these answers ends up being root 13 minus one all over four. Thank goodness I already had a common denominator. Or, x could be, well, this is negative root 13 minus 1 all over 4. These are my two solutions. Boy, do I wish that this had, would have had nicer numbers than that. And uh, there we go. We solved it by completing the square. Step 1, complete the square. Step 2, use opposite operations to solve for the values of x that satisfy that equation there. Undo addition and subtraction undo multiplication, undo the square, and then undo whatever was inside the brackets, in that order, one by one. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.